In this video, we'll take a look at how you can back up and restore your computer with this one recovery tool. In the event you have an issue with your computer, it's good to have a backup just in case you ever need to recover or retrieve your data. So to start with, open a web browser and do a search for LazySoft. There it is, LazySoft Recovery Suite. Let's click into this. This is the software we'll be using to perform the backup and recovery process. Select the download tab at the top. This will bring you into the LazySoft Recovery Suite editions and as you can see, there's a few editions and licensing options. We'll be using the home edition, which is free. So let's go and download this for your home PC. This will launch the download and prompt you to save the software. I'll select save, which will go into my downloads folder. Once that's downloaded, let's open the folder. So there's the setup file for the software. So let's double click on this to start the installation process. Accept the license agreement and next. We'll leave the installation directory under the default location and next. This specifies the location in the start menu for the application. We'll leave this as default and select next. Then select install for the application to go off and complete the installation process. That's completed and the tick box to launch the application is ticked as well. Go to finish. So this lazy soft recovery suite has a number of useful tools such as being able to recover your Windows installation if you've encountered issues with this. It can also help with recovering files from your computer which have been deleted and can also help reset your password in the event you've forgotten it. For this demo though, we'll be using the disk image and clone feature, so let's click into this. So you can see there's a number of options which include being able to back up a drive which can be used to recover your entire computer. To perform a restore of your entire computer to a logical partition or to a physical hard disk. The clone disk feature which can copy an entire disk to another disk. This also allows you to resize a partition, making the target partition larger or smaller than the original. And there's also a number of helpful tools on the left hand side as well. For this demo, we'll be using the backup option, so let's select this. This will open a new window where you can select what you want to back up. Now the computer I'm backing up is a virtual machine and I've only given it a small hard drive size of 20 gig but yours will show a lot larger than this. You can see that it's already selected two partitions to be backed up but I like to back up partitions like the system or recovery drive and the boot drive as well. Even if you don't do a system restore of Windows and just want to restore the data to another drive it's handy to have these partitions backed up. From the drop down at the top it will ask you to select a disk and you'll see that I have three disks. The first is a 20 gig disk being used for the virtual machine and disks 2 and 3 are USB drives that I have attached to the computer. I'll leave this on disk 1 and if we go across to my computer you'll be able to see the 20 gig C drive for the computer. The attached USB E drive is where we'll be performing the backup to. And I also have another blank USB attached to the computer under the D drive. So let's minimize this. Now we have everything set, go and select next. On this window, you have the type of backup that you want to take, but we'll leave this on the default full backup option as this is what we want. Next, we need to choose a save path. So go to browse. Go to this PC and we want to select the USB E drive that we just looked at a moment ago and this is where we'll be saving the backup to. Always make sure the external device that you save your backup to has enough space. Let's create a new folder for the backup and I'll name it LazySoft Backup. 
then go into the folder. And then we need to give the backup a name. So I'll call it Lazy Soft Computer Backup. Once that's done, go to save. Now, if you go to options, this will give you a number of extras for the backup you're about to take. Here, you can add comments for the backup. Set the compression level for this backup. We'll leave this on the default setting. You can alter the file size of the backup. Again, leave this with the default settings. Image creation mode allows you to select whether you want to back up only sectors of the disk that contain data, so only used space. The second option allows you to back up every part of the disk used or unused. You can exclude certain files from the backup and as you can see it already excludes the paging file and hibernation files. You can set the computer to shut down after the backup is complete. And if you want to encrypt the backup, you can set a password on it. I'll leave everything on the default settings and OK out of this. OK, everything is set, so go and select Start. That will now go off and start the backup. For the purpose of this demo, I'll speed up the video, as this can take a while depending on your computer and the size of the disk you're trying to back up. It's calculated that this backup will take around 20 minutes to run, but again your backup could take longer as the drive I'm backing up is only 20 gig. At the top it tells you that it's backing up from disk 1 and placing the backup to the USB drive that I have attached. Again I'm using a USB drive as it has enough space but usually I would use an external hard drive that has more capacity for my own computer. Additional options at the bottom allow you to shut down or restart the computer once the backup is completed. OK, that's completed and you can see it took 24 minutes to complete. Let's select finish and we'll close out of this window. So next we need to restore the backup and we'll mimic the scenario that you can't power on your computer as it's having issues or you just want to restore your computer to this point in time when it was working. Using the lazy soft recovery suite software that we have installed, we're going to create a bootable USB with the lazy soft recovery suite software on. Now you can either burn this to a USB or CD. If I go into File Explorer, you can see that I have a second USB under the D drive which we'll use for this. If you use a USB, make sure you have all the data saved or backed up to another location as the USB will be formatted during this process. Let's minimize this window and go into the burn USB disk option. This will load a wizard to help you create the bootable USB. It gets you to select the Windows version of the target computer. I'll leave this under the default option which is the same, Windows 10 64 bit. And next, select USB flash and from the drop down select the correct USB. I have two USBs connected so I'll select the correct one which is the D drive. If you have the same issue with a couple of USBs connected, just double check to make sure you have the right one selected. Last thing you want to do is select the wrong USB and find out it's been formatted. So now we've confirmed the D drive is the correct drive, let's go back and select start. You'll be prompted to make sure that you have the data backed up on the USB first, so make sure you have this completed. When ready, select yes. This will then go off and format the USB drive and then start to create the bootable USB with the lazy soft recovery software on. That's completed, so select finish. And here you can see the bootable USB with the lazy soft label. And going into this, you'll be able to see the files on the USB. So let's close out these windows now. And I'll restart the computer and show you how you can restore the backup that you've just taken. So when you restart or power on your computer, you want to get into the boot manager. Now this is different on every computer. Normally you can get into this when the computer starts up by pressing the escape key or one of the F1 to F12 keys. Each computer is different, so check your computer vendor's website to see which key you need to press for this. 
But from what I've seen, the keys that will get you here are either Escape, F1, F2 or F10. You want to press this key before you see the Windows icon start to load. If you see the Windows icon loading in the middle of the screen, then you've missed it and need to start again. Also make sure you have the bootable USB attached when starting up. Once this is loaded, you'll see a window like this where you can select what you want to boot into. Now I know that the first USB device I see in the list is the bootable USB, so I'll select this and hit enter. Now it gets you to choose an operating system, so select the LazySoft Live CD here. This will start to load the necessary files required for the application. So once loaded, you'll see the same interface that we've seen when we were logged into Windows. Go into Disk Image and Clone. Now we'll go into the second option here to restore image to drive. So it wants to know the image file path, so let's go to Browse. Then My Computer. Here you can see the Kingston E drive where the backup is, so let's go into this. And into the Lazy Soft folder. And select the backup that we took. And select Open. Now it gives you the details of the backup, including all the volumes. Select Next. I'm restoring all the partitions that are in the backup, so select Next again. Select the correct disk, which will be overwritten during the restore process. The correct disk for me is disk 1, which is 20 gig, and down as physical disk 0 and select Start. It will get you to confirm the partitions that are to be restored. When ready, select OK to this. And that's it. This will start the restore process. I'll speed the video up as this will take a while. Again, you can see how long it's going to take with the restore looking like it will take 30 minutes to complete. So the restore completed successfully in just under 28 minutes, which is good. It gives you the timer to say it will reboot the computer, so go ahead and select reboot now to start this. And log back in after the restore. And there you go. You can see everything has been restored for the operating system, so this is a pretty good tool to perform the backup and restore of a computer. So I hope you found this useful, thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tutorials.